and what research that i'm going to talk to you about from now till the end of the talk shows is that there's a dark side to all of this freedom of choice when people have the kind of choice that modern americans currently have bad things happen and i'm going to describe what they are um next slide the first bad thing that happens is that instead of being liberated by all of this choice people are paralyzed they can't pull the trigger they can't figure out what to do you heard about the famous jam study when there are 30 jams available to sample uh, people are attracted to the display table. They're interested in sampling all the jams. But when it comes time to buy, they are much less likely to buy, a tenth as likely to buy as when there are only six jams available. Why? Because they can't figure out which jam to buy, so they end up buying none. When it comes to 401ks, a psychologist colleague of mine named Sheena Iyengar looked at about 500 different employers employing almost a million people, all of them serviced by Vanguard, the gigantic mutual fund company. And different employers offered employees different numbers of mutual funds options. Some offered two, some offered five, some offered 50, some offered several hundred. And Sheena Iyengar's question was, how does the number of mutual funds available affect the likelihood that people will participate? And understand that in most cases, if you participate, your employer give, put, makes a substantial matching contribution. You put in 5,000 a year, the employer puts in 5,000 a year. What Sheena found is that the more mutual funds the employer made available, the less likely people were to choose any. They were so worried that they would make a wrong decision or a bad decision or a non-optimal decision that they just postponed the decision for tomorrow, but it wasn't any easier to make tomorrow than it was to make today. So they postponed it, and they postponed it, and they postponed it, and they end up passing up substantial matching money from, from their employer. Uh, the last study about choice paralysis is related to education. And this was a study done in a, in a social psychology class at Stanford University where students were given the opportunity to earn extra credit by writing an essay. And in one section of the class, they were given six essay topics to choose from. In, the, in another section of the class, they were given 30 topics to choose from. And what the researchers found is that there were fewer essays written when there were 30 choices than when there were six. Just like with the mutual funds, just like with the jam buying, when there are so many options, you exhaust yourself trying to decide which option to choose, and you end up choosing none. So, Paradox number one, with lots and lots of options, you paralyze and immobilize people instead of liberating them. And you can imagine students uh, trying to figure out what to study in college without clear guidance and a very small set of paths to go through, being completely bewildered, pa paralyzed, unable to act, and deciding they'll figure it out, take a semester off and figure it out. And we all know what happens once uh, students make that decision. If you overcome paralysis and choose, you face the second problem. Next slide. And that problem is that if you man even when you manage to choose, the chances go up that you will make a bad decision. When there are lots of options, people make worse choices. In the case of 401k investing, when people did manage to participate, they ended up putting their money into money market accounts, which at the time the study was being was, was done, the money market account was paying less than 1% interest and the mutual fund, the, the equity mutual funds were typically paying six or 7%. So better to put your money into a money market than to just to put it into a mattress, but it was the worst investment that people could make. Nonetheless, that's what people did because it enabled them to avoid having to decide which equity fund put their money in. Medicare Part D, as you probably know, when Medicare Part D came out, a gift to senior citizens, um, states uh, encourage private insurers to offer prescription drug plans, and they came from all out of the woodwork and offered 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 different prescription drug plans. And despite the fact that this was a gift to senior citizens, a gift worth several thousand dollars, they wouldn't pull the trigger. They had to be threatened with penalties. 
to sign up. Why? Because they couldn't figure out which, which uh, prescription drug plan to sign up for. And in a lab study that simulated these conditions, that, that knew what prescription drugs people use, and asked how likely is it that people will choose the right prescription drug plan, what the researchers found is that when there are a lot of options, people's, uh, the chances that people will choose the right plan go down. So they make bad decisions about which prescription drug plan to choose, even when they're choosing. Um, the next study that shows this, um, again, back to the extra credit essay uh, at the sta in Stanford, uh, Stanford Social Psychology course, among the people who did choose to write an essay, the essays were graded. And the question is, how does the number of topics available affect the quality of the essay? And the answer, and this is quite puzzling, but reliable. The answer is that when you choose an essay from 30 topics, you write a worse essay than when you choose an essay from six topics. <clears throat> Somehow, the, uh, the problems that you encounter in uh, deciding which essay to write cast a shadow when the time finally comes to write the essay. Maybe you start writing it on one topic, and thoughts intrude about all the interesting things you might say about the other topics. In any case, the essays are lower in quality. And finally, a study that was done with uh, four-year-olds, I did this with some colleagues, they, were <clears throat> they chose three magic markers and drew pictures. One group chose three magic markers from a set of six, and one chose three magic markers from a set of 30, and then they drew the pictures. We took the pictures, and we gave them to an elementary school art teacher to evaluate. Quality, complexity, um, motor skill, whatever way elementary art school teachers uh, evaluate the quality of drawings. And what we found, in, in, or again, in both groups, oh, they used only three markers. It's just that in one group, they chose those three from a small set. In another group, they chose them from a large set. And what the art teachers told us is that the kids who, cho who wrote uh, who drew pictures after choosing pens from a large set drew worse pictures than kids who drew pictures after choosing three pens from a small set. So these are examples of how choice, when you overcome paralysis and choose the quality of the decision, or in the case of the essays and the drawings, the quality of the performance deteriorates. One last finding related to this next slide. This is a brand new finding. There is good reason to believe, and I think this is very much relevant to the populations that you folks are worried about, there's reason to believe that there we have a limited resource of self-control, a limited resource of self-discipline. If we have to exercise our self-control to do our homework or to uh, exercise or whatever, do anything that is unpleasant, it's going to, set, it's going to exhaust our self-control muscle. And then if we now face another challenge that demands self-control, our muscles are fatigued and we give in to temptation. So there's been a lot of research that shows this. What does this have to do with choice? One of the studies that was done that shows this was the following. You have people make a series of choices, a series of binary decisions. You want the red candle or the green candle. You want the uh, hard toothbrush or the medium toothbrush. A series of uh, hundred choices, all of them hypothetical and all involving relatively trivial things. And then you give them a task to do that demands self-control, that demands self-discipline, like working on difficult math problems. And the question is, how long do they persist? And the answer is that if they have made a series of choices prior to being given this task, they quit the task sooner than if they haven't been given a series of choices prior to doing this task. If instead of having to make these choices between red and green candles and hard and soft toothbrushes, you have them simply rate the objects on a seven point scale, so it's still demanding, but it doesn't demand choice. Now when they do the math problems, they persist for longer. And so what this says to me, at least possibly, if you make people struggle to figure out what to study and you exhaust their self-control muscle, you exhaust their ability to persevere. Now when the time comes actually to study the things that they have decided to study, they quit. 